In the heart of Rexburg, Idaho, where pastoral serenity held reign, and where the quotidian rhythm of life pulsed with the gentle thrum of contentment, one man bore a peculiar burden that set him apart from the serene ebb and flow of town life. Detective Robert Keene, a grizzled survivor of a past buried beneath tornado-scarred rubble, now cast his weathered gaze upon the oddity that had pierced the town's tranquil veneer, the antique shop past echoes. Keen was a striking figure, his posture carrying an echo of defiance and resilience, his eyes carrying the weight of the world, yet twinkling with an inherent kindness. He wore his graying hair like a crown of wisdom and courage. From the embers of trauma, he had emerged as a beacon of hope, the shepherd to lost souls, his own despair molding him into an unwavering pillar of compassion and justice. Evening, Robert, greeted Mary, the town's baker, her face blooming into a warm smile as she spotted him near the shop. Evening, Mary, Keen replied, his voice as comforting as a well-worn sweater. The words hung in the air between them like fragments of a life that was before the ghostly specters began their visitations. The faint aroma of baking bread wafted from Mary's apron, a saccharine reminder of the comforting mundanity that once was. Tell me, Mary, have you seen anything strange around past echoes? Mary's smile faltered, her gaze shifting towards the shop. The setting sun painted the antique shop in an eerie palette of shadows and sinking light, making the dust motes hanging in the air glimmer like tiny phantoms. Well, she started, hesitation lining her voice. Things move around on their own sometimes. My Tom swears he saw an old rocking chair rock on its own. He nodded, making a mental note. This wasn't the first account he'd heard about the strange happenings around the shop. There was a disquiet that draped over the town like an unseen fog, and he intended to clear it. A shiver traced his spine, the whispers of a silent wind echoing the tempestuous roars of his past. His trauma echoed in this mystery, and he couldn't ignore the resonance. Entering the antique shop, he was greeted by an orchestra of bygone eras. The air was laden with the scent of polished wood, rusting iron, and time-forgotten stories and his eyes took in the melange of curiosities. He could almost feel the undercurrent of unease like an out-of-tune note in a symphony, invisible yet present. In the dimly lit corners of the shop, he saw not just objects, but fragments of time held captive within mundane forms. Amongst them, he felt the echoes of his own past, his soul whispering to the unseen as he delved deeper into the rabbit hole that was past echoes. In the belly of past echoes, Detective Keen navigated the labyrinth of relics, each object an ode to yesteryears. The antique shop seemed to breathe with echoes of bygone eras, the air dense with whispers of stories waiting to be deciphered. With his open-minded temperament and intrepid spirit, he sought these whispers, his heart beating in time with the shop's unearthly rhythm. The shop was awash with shadows that danced on the periphery of his vision a spectral ballet orchestrated by the flickering overhead lights. Amidst the motley of time-worn curiosities, an object caught his attention. An amulet, unassuming in its appearance, yet radiating an energy that was tangible to his touch. As he held it, the metal pulsed with an ethereal warmth, a peculiar heartbeat that seemed to resonate with the whispers of the shop. A soft creak echoed in the silence, drawing his attention towards the shop owner, Mr. Elias. He was a tall man with an archaic demeanor, his skin like parchment etched with the lines of time. Ah, you found the amulet, Elias said, his voice a coarse whisper that seemed to merge with the shop's low hum. Keen, studying Elias and the amulet, posed his query. Tell me, Elias, where does this piece come from? It, it feels different. Elias regarded Keen for a moment, his gaze scrutinizing, then sighed heavily the weight of untold tales hanging in the air. That there is an odd piece. Came to me from an estate sale. Never felt quite right. As Keen delved deeper into his investigation, an eerie tapestry began to form, woven by accounts of spectral apparitions, objects moving with unseen hands, and a chilling sense of being watched. The townsfolk, when interviewed, shared similar stories. Their voices a chorus of unease, their tales treading the thin line between reality and superstition. As the days turned into nights, he found himself drawn into the enigma of the shop. 
the strange occurrences mirroring the shadowed corners of his own past. A creeping sensation of dread seeped into his dreams, casting a pall over his nights with visions of swirling dark clouds, eerily reminiscent of his traumatic encounter with the tornado. He was sitting in his small office at the Rexburg Police Department, mulled over the connections he was slowly unraveling. The unsettling amulet lay on his desk, pulsating with an energy that seemed to penetrate the mundanity of his surroundings. As he traced the etchings on the amulet, he felt an unsettling shift in the atmosphere, as though unseen eyes were watching him. The dawn broke over Rexburg, casting long, stretching shadows that danced alongside the rising melody of the town waking. Yet, amidst the comforting humdrum of life, Keen found himself at the heart of an enigma. His dreams were no longer safe havens, but haunting tableaus filled with sinister apparitions in an ever-present vortex of darkness. The enigmatic amulet seemed to be the key, its incessant pulse a siren song drawing him deeper into the realm of the unknown. Delving into the town's obscure folklore, he discovered tales of an ancient cosmic horror. The accounts shrouded in layers of superstition and half-forgotten lore spoke of a time when an unspeakable evil roamed the land until it was banished and trapped within earthly trinkets. The amulet, he began to believe, could be one such trinket. His exploration of the past became a haunting waltz with reality and the supernatural. Each interview with the townsfolk revealed new layers of fear and reverence towards the ghostly happenings. Their eyes, alight with terror and curiosity, mirrored his own struggle to separate fact from fiction. As his quest deepened, he found his firm grasp on reality loosening. His daytime exploration of the shop was punctuated by ghostly apparitions, echoing the nightmares that plagued his sleep. The air grew thick with inhuman whispers that pricked at his sanity, and a sense of dread, as relentless as the Idaho winters, began to freeze around his heart. Late one afternoon, in the heart of the antique shop, he experienced a moment of terrifying clarity. The amulet in his hands throbbed with a life of its own, and the whispers grew louder, their spectral cadence filling the air with an ominous symphony. His gaze was drawn to a mirror in the corner, and for a moment he saw his reflection warp and shift, his figure twisted in the spectral maelstrom. As twilight descended upon Rexburg, a decision crystallized in his mind. It was a decision born out of courage, despair, and an unwavering commitment to those loss. The amulet, pulsating in his hand like a cosmic heart, seemed to thrum in agreement. It was time to face the unseen, to confront the ancient entity that lay shrouded within the labyrinth of time and tales. Night fell, casting the town in an indigo shroud punctuated by stars that bore silent witness to the events unfolding beneath them. Keen, standing in the heart of past echoes, felt the weight of their silent watch. He was a lone figure against the backdrop of cosmic vastness, a testament to human resilience. As he opened the amulet, a surge of energy rippled through the shop. The silence of the night was shattered as a vortex of cosmic energy was unleashed filling the shop with swirling black clouds. His heart pounded in his chest, the tornado of his nightmares coming alive once more. The spectral symphony that had haunted him now roared in full crescendo, the shop filled with inhuman voices that echoed from the abyss. The confrontation with the ancient entity was a dance with the ethereal. Face to face with the ghostly apparitions that had plagued the town, he did not flinch. His strength lay not in his physical prowess, but in his unwavering spirit. The courage that had carried him through a tornado, that had helped him navigate the stormy seas of trauma, now fueled his confrontation with the spectral maelstrom. Through the cacophony, he held onto the image of the lost souls he had vowed to find, their memory anchoring him amidst the tempest. His resolve did not waver as the entity bore down on him, its formless shape a chilling silhouette against the churning vortex. With a final surge of courage, he forced the entity back into the amulet. The energy in the room subsided as the amulet snapped shut, the spectral winds dying down to a mere whisper. But the victory came with a cost. With his strength spent, he collapsed onto the floor. The amulet, 
falling from his lifeless grip. His last breaths echoed the howling wind of the tornado that had claimed his childhood, intertwining his past, his present, and his eternal struggle against the unknown. His eyes, once vibrant with compassion and resilience, now mirrored the stars that bore silent witness from above, their light dimming as he succumbed to the cosmic horror. Thank you for tuning in. If you enjoyed our content, show your support with a like and subscribe, and stay notified by hitting the bell icon. Expect more cosmic horror from Eldritch Tales Factory, and feel free to explore our other stories. See you in the next video.